if there is a commodity without which it is difficult to imagine the existence of present-day man, it is oil. Oil has become the vital lifeline of the economic development of a country. Speaking about oil and economic development, Saudi Arabia possesses around 17% of the world's petroleum reserves and has the second largest amount of oil reserves in the world with 297.5 billion barrels. The discovery of oil increased Saudi Arabia's economic development and made it a rich country. But how and when was the oil found in Saudi Arabia? Watch this video till the end to find out. The demand for oil during World War I was one of the main factors that triggered the search for oil in Arabia. It became obvious that oil was going to be a crucial resource in warfare for the foreseeable future. A major source of income for the ruler of Hijaz was the taxes paid by pilgrims on their way to the holy cities. But after the onset of the Great Depression, the number of pilgrimages per year fell from 100,000 to below 40,000. This affected the economy greatly and they needed to find alternate sources of income, which was also another factor that led to the search for oil in Arabia. The discovery of oil in other places in the Middle East also boosted the search. In 1922, Ibn Saad, the founder and first king of Saudi Arabia, met with Major Franklin Holmes who was a mining engineer from New Zealand. He was convinced that there would be a lot of oil to be found in the region and started seeking oil concessions through the syndicate. In 1923, the king signed a contract with Holmes to allow him to search for oil in the eastern part of the country. A Swiss geologist was brought in to evaluate the land, but he claimed that searching for oil in Arabia would be a pure gamble. This caused many banks and oil companies to stay away from investing in Arabian oil ventures. In 1925, Holmes signed a concession with the Sheik of Bahrain, allowing him to search for oil there. He then went to the United States to find an oil company that might be interested in taking on the concession. Gulf Oil came forward to help him. In 1927, it took control of the concessions that Holmes made years ago. But Gulf Oil was a partner in the Iraq Petroleum Company which was jointly owned by other companies and the partners had signed the Red Line Agreement, which meant that Gulf Oil was precluded from taking up the Bahrain concession without the consent of the other partners, and they declined. This forced Gulf Oil to transfer its interest to another company called Standard Oil of California, which was not bound by the Red Line Agreement. Meanwhile, King Ibn Saad sent an American mining engineer, Carl Twitchell, to examine the potential of oil discovery in eastern Arabia. Twitchell found a few encouraging signs of oil but advised the king to await the outcome of the Bahrain No. 1 well before inviting foreign bids for oil exploration. In 1932, the Standard Oil of California subsidiary, the Bahrain Petroleum Company, struck oil in Bahrain and this brought about a renewed interest in the hunt for oil in Arabia and made them feel optimistic. In 1933, Standard Oil of California was awarded an oil concession for the province of Al Hassa in Saudi Arabia. Under the agreement, SoCal was given exploration rights to some 930,000 square kilometers of land for 60 years. Soon after the agreement, geologists arrived in Al Hassa and the search for oil was underway. SoCal set up a subsidiary company, the California Arabian Standard Oil Company, to develop the oil concession. In 1936, Dam and Well Numbers 1-6 all showed promising signs of oil available in commercial quantities but however, they all failed to live up to the expectations. Soon, the Kasak geologists surveyed the concession area and identified a promising site and named it Damam No. 7, after a nearby village. But well No. 7 also disappointed, even after drilling to a depth of close to 1,400 meters. With disappointing results, Soka L's executives faced a dilemma about whether to pull the plug on the Arabian venture but chief geologist Max Steinick urged the team to drill deeper and the drillers finally struck oil on March 3, 1938. It started flowing at a rate of 1,585 barrels a day. 
This was a major oil discovery which would turn out to be the first of many, eventually revealing the largest source of crude oil in the world. Oil revenues became a crucial source of wealth for the king, since he no longer had to rely on income gained from pilgrimages to Mecca. The discovery radically changed the political geography of Saudi Arabia, the Middle East, and the world. The first oil shipment was sent in 1939 in the presence of the king and the name of the company in control of oil in Saudi Arabia was changed to Arabian American Oil Company. In 1948, the Gawar oil field, which is the largest conventional oil field in the world, was discovered in the eastern part of the kingdom. Aramco then signed a 50-50 profit-sharing agreement whereby a tax was levied by the government. It increased the Saudi government's revenues substantially. The world's largest offshore field, the Safania oil field, was discovered in 1951. By 1988, Aramco was officially bought out by Saudi Arabia and became known as Saudi Aramco. After 45 years of continuous production, Damonwell No. 7 was taken out of production in 1982 and was renamed to Prosperity Well in 1999. Saudi Arabia generated the highest surplus in the international trade of crude petroleum oil in 2021 and still continues to be the world's largest exporter of crude oil. Will Saudi Arabia continue to dominate the world in terms of crude oil exports? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, tap the thumbs up icon and share this video. Hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell icon. I will see you again in a new video with a new topic to explain. Thanks for watching.